It was just a few weeks ago in Washington, D.C. I had the opportunity to make a new friend, and she left quite an impression. Her name was Samantha Bannister, 12 years old. She arrived in a wheelchair, surrounded by loving family and friends. I was told about her story. She had been battling a very rare form of brain cancer, diagnosed, as I understand it, just over a year ago, and she wanted to meet me, and I was so flattered by that. The encounter became one of those brief moments, you know, that permanently imprints itself upon you. And you should have seen Sammy, you know, huge smile. This beautiful voice that seemed both strong and fragile at the same time. And a contagious enthusiasm. The Bannister family had been told for a long time that the odds were against her. And while the good men and women of medical science fought as hard as they could alongside the family, the cancer ultimately took Samantha this morning. Around 6.30, she was at that moment, as she always had been, surrounded with love. Sammy was the kind of kid who would be in the midst of a battle inside her own body, racked with pain, facing the worst of odds, and she would be thinking about other people. You know, hey, are you okay? What can I do for you? She joined her dad, Jeremiah, to speak in front of crowds about her life, her perspectives as a young rationalist the challenges she was facing, and of course the critical issue of childhood cancer. She wanted to make a difference. And in the few minutes we spent together, Samantha just stole my heart. This is a family in need. They have a desperate financial need, which means they're not just facing the death of this beautiful girl, but they're facing it under the shadow of tremendous medical bills, life expenses, and now the cost for her funeral. On top of the tremendous outpouring we've seen of love and encouragement and verbal support for the Bannister family, I want to be part of helping to alleviate the financial burden so that they can see their way clear of the hospital and the memorial expenses and they might someday soon come to a place where they can focus solely and completely on Samantha's memory, on the messages that Sammy would want to live on, you know, messages about meeting needs, fighting cancer, loving other people and living life every moment of life to the fullest. Sammy was the tiny dancer. This, of course, is a reference to the classic Elton John song, a song played for her on the day of her surgery. Her team was Team Tiny Dancer. That's a hashtag you might have seen out there online. There's a donation page where we can help. GoFundMe.com slash Team Tiny Dancer. Whether you followed Samantha's story from day one, or whether today is your introduction to the story of Samantha Bannister, of helping this family is something you would like to do. I know they'd welcome that help, you know, not just your words of support, but financial help so that they might one day find a day that's not only filled with fond memories, but perhaps hope and comfort and healing and a chance to move forward. I don't believe there's any point in trying to make sense of Sammy's death. It came much too early, a horrible, unthinkable thing in an unfair world. But for my part, Samantha will be a reminder of the fragility and the preciousness of life and how every second's a gift and how important it is, whenever we can, to try and give something back. To the Bannister family, our thoughts and our support are with you.